We're here because we're worried about our young kids growing into bigger kids who are actually grappling with issues of entitlement. We don't want our kids to be the ones who are over at their friend's house and somebody prepares this really lovely, so meal, for, lovely meal for them. And then they, they go, ew, I don't like that. <laughs> and I have no sense that this person, this other human being has taken the time to prepare a meal and give it to them. Um, we're really concerned that our kids will be out of touch with the goodness that they do have in their lives. And this is not in any way to diminish um, you know, true challenges and struggles. This is actually a way to build resiliency for those challenges and struggles. Because what we found in the resilience research is that people who have more grateful, a stronger grateful affect, a, a more attitude of gratitude, more um, appreciation for what they have in their lives tend to have better outcomes. And I wondered about this, I researched about this, I conducted some studies through the Greater Good Science Center's Youth Gratitude Project uh, with my co-author Giacomo Bono. Um, and we really wanted to know like, how can we cultivate more gratitude, not just in you know, teens and young adults and maybe elementary age kids, but also young children as in preschoolers, kindergartners, first graders. So we developed a curriculum that I'm gonna share pieces of with you today in ways that actually are achievable for parents. Uh, it's really important to me that I'm not handing over, you know, a whole 10 lesson plan to you, that you're just getting some quick hacks that if you can grab onto these principles and then implement them in your home and, um, you know, in daily life, that it will build up that sort of grateful attitude that will also give your children more resiliency. Think of, think about for yourself just a moment, for, just, just take a moment. Um, I want you to kind of tune into the, the truth of this. So think of a time when you went through something really difficult and then you were able to kind of take a step back and find something about your experience to feel grateful for, whether it was um, a lesson learned or an opportunity to have an experience that now allows you to help others. Um, you know, I, I have, since I've come across the science of gratitude, I, I have found it really powerful in my life. I mean, during big events, like losing um, a loved one when my grandparents passed away over these past few years, um, going through a divorce, um, you know, going through experiences like um, I was just hospitalized with, and that's why I haven't been here, everybody in the Raising Resilience parent group. And I had to take a two or three week medical leave. And I could have seen that as such a fail or such a loss or, you know, um, and it was frightening and I, and I am okay. <laughs> but um, getting me through it, like when I was actually in the hospital and I was not knowing if I had COVID and which I don't, um, not knowing if I was going to go septic, which I didn't, <laughs> but in those really scary times, like I just kept, kept saying to myself, be grateful, find something to be grateful for. And I did. And it just really helped me through. I was like, Thank goodness I have I have a hospital within 10 miles of my house. Thank goodness this nurse seems to be really concerned about my well-being. Thank goodness there's enough protective gear at this moment for, for all of us to stay safe. Thank goodness um, my fever finally broke, right? Those kinds of things. And every time I expressed gratitude, I felt more hopeful, I felt more supported and uh, more resourced going through something really difficult. So first of all, if you're here tuning in, either watching the video here on, um, you know, on Zoom or on Facebook, just write in the comments, let me know where you're tuning in from, say hello. Um, like I would write, you know, um, I'm in El Cerrito and I have a 20, and also let me know about your kids. I have a 22 and 24 year old um, stepkids. And then I also now have, um, you know, a six year old in my household. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm spanning the ages here. <laughs> so go ahead and let me know where you're tuning in from. And I want you to tell me about a time where you went through something difficult and gratitude helped you through. Even if it wasn't in the moment, you weren't able to grasp it in the moment, maybe it helped you to uh, make sense of and even like move on from something that was really difficult, help you have some closure or some forgiveness or some resolution. Um, at very least, uh, being able to cope and keep going. You know, we often talk about sort of this um, compassion fatigue that happens for parents and people who are other people who are in caregiving roles. 
Um, we talk about, you know, also the sort of like kind of uh, racial battle fatigue, like where you're constantly trying to cope with, you know, racism, sexism, ageism, classism, whatever is coming, whatever kind of, um, you know, struggle you're dealing with and having to continually <laughs> speak up. And, and these are the, these are real things that are happening for us in our lives and we're having to cope with, and not to mention all the stresses of just raising kids. So I'm sure there's been a time, and if you, ha if you can't think of one, think right now what it would be like to have had gratitude concepts in your, in your world and in your life since you were two, three, four, five, and six. And now as an adult, as you're hearing these things, like, can you also use these practices to help you with your own resilience and gratefulness? I, I do, I do um, invite you very much so <laughs> to consider that today. Okay, so right into the hacks. So the three hacks that, I, that came out of the research and that the Greater Good Science Center did such a great job creating a little video for is really um, making sure that kids realize that they're, they can notice good things. Like, so really bringing that awareness so they see the good. So noticing and then thinking like, oh, I wonder how this good thing came to me or wonder why this person did this good thing for me. I wonder like, you know, what, what, what this could mean about maybe how that person feels about me. So noticing, thinking, and then feeling, which is like tuning into that grateful feeling. Like, how does it feel in your heart? How does it feel in your body? Like, what do you notice? Do you notice you're smiling? the people, plants, animals, resources that have brought those good things to their table, whether it's a beautiful, tasty piece of fruit um, or the pencil in their hand that has an eraser that works, that their mom got them, right? Um, and then we take these three concepts and we shift into do, like what can you do with that gratitude? And that's the second part that we'll go over in our training. So going right into notice, um, think and feel, I'm gonna show you a video that I just think, um, you know, it really helps to capture it. And then we'll come right back and I'll um, debrief with you about what we watched, okay? All right, so here we go. Here are some tips to cultivate gratitude in our children. Scientists have identified four parts of gratitude and we can have conversations with our children to help their gratitude grow using notice, think, feel, do questions. Did you notice how she knit your favorite animal? Help your kids notice the gift behind the gift. So I just wanted to interject here and say, I, I want to sh want you to, to um, you know, note the distinction that the, the, the video is giving you questions to prompt your child so that they can kind of internalize the ideas rather than lecturing them. So instead of saying, um, did you know, like, are saying, um, your, your aunt gave you this nice thing. Don't you think you should say thank you? That's a really different question than, did you notice that your aunt gave you this special? About it. That's really different. So there's a, there's a major distinction there that we'll, I'll, I'll recap on at the end. So notice is first. No, it's okay. Why do you think you received this gift? Well, it's not my birthday or anything. Auntie is always telling me she loves me. How does her gift make you feel? <laughs> Happy. Is there a way you want to show how you feel? Kids won't always experience all the parts of gratitude, and that's okay. Asking our children what they notice, think, and feel about things they receive so and what they you, might want to do after. The, like we'll now that your kids and, have received all these gifts, potentially, right? At least maybe one gift from one of the holidays, or maybe they're just, you know, home a lot and they're, they're getting to have, you know, new learning materials from school or perhaps like a new kind of food they're trying. Um, maybe it's even just a new pair of socks, right? It can be something that simple. But for them to notice that it's there, notice what they like about it or what's good about it, um, think about where it came from or who provided it um, and how they might benefit from it. 
um, asking these questions like, did you notice that, that your socks are made out of, um, you know, this really soft cotton that feels really, really good and soft. Did you see that too? Uh, what do you like about it? Oh, I like that it's rainbow, right? And you're like, oh yeah, rainbows. Who thought to give you rainbow socks? Oh, that was grandma. Oh, why do you think grandma picked rainbow socks? <laughs> like, well, cause she knows that I love rainbows. Like, wow, how does it make you feel that grandma thought about you and even thought about how you love rainbows? Feels really good, okay. Great, what would you like to do? <laughs> and then like in the video, how there's the three dots because kids are often like, oh, I don't know, right? So what I'm gonna share with you next comes from my research study with Giacomo Bono. He had already done some research about what young kids identify as acts of kindness. So things like getting me a Band-Aid when I, when I fall down, um, giving me a hug when I feel sad, um, sharing your snack with me, you know, <laughs> share, like a friend sharing a snack. And so we built those into this idea of the wheel of thanks. Now, if you're listening on the Raising Our Resilience page, it has just a little circle with the hands. I'm gonna finish this in the Raising Our Resilience parent group where you can actually interact with me, put, put in your questions into the, into the comment box and we can um, you know, have a live discussion. So in this post where you're watching right now, if you click up at the top, you can click on the link to the group and join me there, okay? So we'll see you there. Um, so, those of us right here in the Raising Our Resilience group and um, those who are listening on YouTube, um, you can, um, you know, take a moment to, you know, write, just write down somewhere, notice, think, and feel. Even if it's just like a note in your in your phone or somewhere where you'll remember it on a post-it note and stick it on, stick it on, you know, maybe your bathroom mirror or something. Because it's a really quick way to just like have, have a little gratitude conversation, okay? So I want you to kind of, feel, you know, grab that as your three key strategies for young kids. Cause you can do this as young as two. Like you can give them lots of like, they can go, mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm, or can you point to, or can you feel this? I mean, it's amazing what, how much communication can happen with even like an 18 month year old. Okay. Um, but what I would love for you to do now is also um, consider different ways that kids can express their thanks. Now for most other emotions we noticed, Kids, like we don't tell them how to express being sad very much or how to express being happy. Like we don't like, now you jump up and down. <laughs> um, but for, for some reason with the, the emotion of gratitude, when our hearts are filled with joy, when we're thinking about how, the goodness we have in our lives, maybe we're savoring that goodness, maybe we're noticing it, maybe we're um, connecting it with the person or place or thing that gave us the goodness. Um, we often don't really, uh, we often just give our kids one way to express that, which is to say the words, you got it, thanks or thank you. And then we kind of end there. And so what it can start to, to be, and this is the thing I, I was wanting every parent to avoid, <laughs> is that we can, first of all, tell kids that they should be thankful, which is strange. Like you should be happy. You should be angry. You should be sad. Kind of doesn't, doesn't fit, right? So neither should, neither can, <laughs> um, you should be grateful because it's really an emotion. It has to come from within in the sense that they can have a thought that sparks the feeling. But if we just tell them to feel the feeling, it usually doesn't work, right? If I was like, now be happy, <laughs> it doesn't usually work, right? So be grateful, not so much. So please, I have to say, stop shooting all over your kids to be grateful. You should say, thank you, you should be thankful. Now, it is totally helpful for kids of preschool age to learn the social norms of their culture. So if there is a timely way and a specific way to say, thank you, great. Please teach your kids the social script so that they get into the routine of saying thank you. But what I don't want you to do is to have that replace or even override authentic experiences of gratitude. Okay. That's like, that was a whole point of our early childhood research is like, how about if we help kids say thank you and thank you in many different ways that feel really authentic to them. So one of the things we created is called the wheel of thanks. And the, I'm going to show you this little, um, this slide here from, from, a, from when I presented the findings of my study. Um, and what, what we noticed was that, let's see, how do I do this? What, notice, what we noticed is that when kids have more options on how to share their thanks, they're much more likely to pick something and have it feel less like that sing-songy, thank you, 
or they're just filling in the, the blank, right? And so here's, here's what we did in a study. This is one of our sessions as we read this book called Feeling Thankful. And it just helps showing like everyday experiences of feeling thankful. Like this one says, I'm thankful for me, for the things that I have, like this little bike um, and the things that I do, like this child, this young child, you know, making some art and finger painting. I'm thankful for the people who are special to me and so on. So we read this book, so put it on your list, Feeling Thankful, just a sweet picture book, great for kids, especially four and under. Um, and I have one that's for five, four and, and, and older as well coming up. But after reading it, what we did is we just said, you know, look, um, we had this little monkey character in our curriculum, but what we did is we said, you can use the wheel of thanks to learn about all these different ways to say thanks and show gratitude. And this is an example of one that a child had colored in after we talked about it. And we had one up in the classroom. And if you notice on here, it does say, you know, smile and say thank you. But then we say for what, right? So smile and say thank you for. So if you just gave, if you were a grandma and you gave your grandchild a pair of rainbow socks and they just go, thank you. It's like, it's, you know, better than nothing, right? You're kind of pretty happy that they fulfilled their social script. But what if they, they looked at you and they smiled and they said, thank you for the really cool rainbow socks. I love how they feel on my feet, right? Like that's really, it's like a shift, right? So we wanted to emphasize smiling, like showing on your face, your joy and, and sharing it. Um, and then kids really liked uh, quite a few of these, you know, one child, who kind of loves making pictures, really wanted to draw a picture. So by the way, these are really great ideas to share with your kids now, right after they receive gifts so that they have more options to be excited about giving their, sh sharing their gratitude and their thanks. So you could be extra nice, which was one that kids came up with, um, give a hug, give a high five, which those two are a little harder right now, but maybe within your household or your quarantine, your bubble, um, write a thank you letter is the classic one. Um, make a little like awesome friend or awesome grandma award. <laughs> um, and then you can imagine how many times the kids wanted to share a treat. <laughs> and you can guess why, because if they, if they share a treat, what do they also get to do? Eat the treat, right? <laughs> so they get to bake the cookies, eat the cookies and send the cookies off, okay? So one thing you could consider is making your own wheel of thanks together. You don't even you don't even have to have my template from our curriculum, right? Um, you can just come up with ask them what are some ways that we can show kindness and that we're we're grateful or we're, we're thankful, and make your own little wheel of thanks. It could even just be four things, and draw little pictures, color it, and then what we did is we just like thumbtacked it to the wall, and the kids could turn it and point, and they loved it. And what it does is it doesn't tell them how they should be grateful or how they should express their gratitude. It just helps them when that authentic gratitude comes up, especially from those conversations where you're asking them questions and making and making them connect the dots for themselves. That when that feeling comes up like, wow, I feel so warm in my heart or something, you say, great, let's, let's head over to the wheel of thanks and pick a way that we can share our gratitude. Awesome. Um, and Jennifer's here, Jennifer LH from Richmond and Jennifer C from San Diego. So good to see you both. I love that you're here. And I'm so sorry to hear that you've lost your father-in-law, Jennifer. Ouch, that's really tough. Um, and I, I see how being able to sit with him would bring you gratitude in, in his last days. Wow, thank you for sharing that. And also gratitude for the staff and um, that he's no longer suffering, yeah. And I'm curious, like what shifted for you in your grief when you tuned into that grateful feeling and what a great gift to give our kids, right? To be able to have that now, but also when they're the adult trying to cope with, you know, bigger losses that where we really have that bigger meaning of what it means when we lose, lose people or, or, or suffer in that way. Well, my heart goes out to you, hon. Um, and I know, I know how meaningful it can be to, to, you know, come together as a family in, in that loss and, and share in that, in that experience. So big hugs, sweetie. Um, so, so back to the, to the hacks, I think it's a good time to just, to just go ahead and put in the comments, the notice that you're going to ask questions that help your children. Okay. So that would be the bigger note, the long version, ask questions to help my child notice 
So like notice the good things, not in a luxury way, right? Not like, did you notice? Why didn't you notice? Which just can be pretty <laughs> aggressive, right? Um, more like, um, wow, notice how this is happening or wow, did you notice? Like, isn't this interesting how? And you can cut, you can expand on that, right? Um, the other thing you can do is um, besides notice, right? Is think. And so you can have them just like be aware and notice, but then also think like, why did this person give this to you? Why do you think they picked this out for you? Um, why do you think they did this nice thing for you? What must they want for you? And it just helps the kids again to connect those dots. And then usually what ends up happening is once they have those, those thoughts happening is that they start to feel, they really do start to feel something like, you know, they might feel happy or great, grateful, or they might just feel like curious or something, right? Something they might not even be able to identify and put to words. But it's okay. It's like, yeah. And then you can share what you feel. It's like, well, when I think about that, I feel this way and it fills my heart with joy or however you want to. And then can even say, it even makes me feel like I want to do something like maybe something nice for, for that person or, or treat this thing with a lot of respect, you know, like take good care of this beautiful new toy that we have because wow, it took a lot of people and resources to make this thing. So the do part can be really interesting. It doesn't just have to fit on the wheel, right? You can see what spontaneously comes up. Sometimes kids come up with the best ideas. <laughs> like this one, this one girl, um, she was, let's see, a little older. She was like a first grader. She came up with this idea that she wanted to um, make, make a picture of, the, of, of her teacher's favorite um, color but, and, and the thing that she could draw best, which at the time was a cat. So she drew the teacher an orange cat because the teacher loved orange and she knew how to draw a cat. So she put those things together, which I thought was so sweet. Another one, which is in the draw the picture idea. But so again, we're just, I'm, I'm just modeling for you what it's like to sort of brainstorm ways to express gratitude besides saying thank you. Another one was um, an older child wanted to finger knit a long white scarf for her art teacher because her art teacher had gotten these new supplies for the classroom and she was so, she loved them and had such a, such a good time making art with them. And she said, oh, well, I noticed that she loves white and she's really tall. So I'll make a really long scarf. And then she did and she was so proud. Like you could just see the joy on her face. It was just lit up like handing the scarf to her art teacher. And then a six-year-old wanted to tag along just to watch and see how, how it went. Cause like it's contagious, right? It's like, it's like this beautiful sort of ripple effect that happens. And she really wanted to see how much she liked it. Um, kind of like when, when we watch our kids open presents, right? Um, so, so you've got your three questions to, that will lead to noticing, thinking, and feeling, and then you're going to really expand your idea of what they can do with those feelings, helping the kids find their own authentic expression of gratitude. And it starts as young as two, like some kids don't like touching, but they'll like words. Some kids don't like saying things, but they'll, they'll touch, right? And give a high five or hug. Some kids don't want to do it face to face. They'd rather draw a picture and send it in the mail. Other kids can't wait to FaceTime and see their faces, you know? So kind of going with what your child um, is inclined to do naturally is a great place where you're going to build from there. Um, and I just want to share to some outcomes of gratitude, of having this grateful sort of um, con these grateful concepts building over time, what it can lead to, because lucky for us, there's been all of this incredible research about now in gratitude in youth and how it's how when great when kids are grateful it's connected to like I mentioned resiliency but also does things like help them have better friendships um, because that they they can appreciate the strengths of their friends and share that and then they tend to get that social support back like also grateful kids who have more gratitude are often um, given more attention whether we like it or not, from their teachers and their family members, um, just more doors open up, right? Um, more opportunity. Um, and kids who are grateful can also get through um, times of adversity. It's one of the one of the bigger, um, more robust coping tools for trauma. So we if we're also, you know, knowing that our kids have gone will go through several. Like most children will have four to six, you know. Um, traumatic events in their first 18 years, whether it's experiencing parents divorcing or experiencing a death in the family 
which are bigger ones or even smaller ones like incidences with you know unkindness um, perhaps like you know having food you know not having food security perhaps experiencing you know um, a loved one being incarcerated like all these different versions of trauma and so why not reach for something that's already natural right having more gratitude it's not the only way obviously right but it's one thing that we know now through the research is correlated to so many great outcomes. So I'm gonna go ahead and share just the last little bit of this, um, the video around, um, you know, the science of gratitude, like what we know to be, what we know, we've been able to see correlations between. Um, and let's see right here. You could just kind of dream forward. And it can encourage young. them to express their gratitude beyond saying thank you. As our children grow, they'll have more opportunities to experience gratitude. Studies show grateful kids and teens are less likely to be jealous, depressed, and materialistic, and more likely to be satisfied with their community, engaged in doing well in school, and have better social support. Developing gratitude takes practice, reflection, and time. And when our children are able to experience all the parts of gratitude, they are more likely to use their strengths to help others and make their community better. And so what we learn, you know, what we see there is like where this can go. And so I would love to hear from each of you um, what, what it might look like, you know, what you would like most hope for, for your child, right? So maybe, um, something you would love less of and something you'd love more of. And, and if you could put it in the comments, that'll help me because I will be able to, you know, kind of coach you around the less, what you'd like less of <laughs> and what you'd like more of. So go ahead and put it in the comments. One of the things that I've noticed that parents, while you're, you're sharing yours, time and time again, they would like less complaining about things that are actually not so bad. <laughs> You know, like, so um, whining about not getting the, the, the exact dinner that they wanted or complaining that the, the present wasn't the right color. I mean, things that like really are nominal in the big scheme of things. So first thing we have to do is have compassion for the fact that they're young with limited life experience. So when, when people have limited life experience, that means they don't have past experiences to draw from, to have a sense of perspective and context of like, this is actually I, you know, something that is, you know, warrants a high degree of suffering <laughs> versus I don't, I didn't get what I wanted and I, and I, and, and now I have this strong emotion and I don't know what to do with it. Right. So just note, just having a bit of compassion for like, okay, this is a human being with limited life experience. They don't get it. <laughs> and then we can try the logic, right? So we can help to explain to them. So like, oh, look, isn't it interesting that, you know, uh, you you know these come in many different colors and it seems like so and so picked this out for you and um, and what 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 about having no you know toy right like what if having no Playmobil set what would that feel like um, well I guess it's not so bad to have the blue one then huh <laughs> you know helping them with some perspective is one thing you can do um, another thing you can do is um, address other aspects of their emotional wellness right so. General coping skills, which like Jennifer LH and Jennifer Cormier and many of you who will be listening to this know that I'm a really big fan of calm parent strategies for ourselves and for our kids. Because when we have emotional coping tools, we can build up emotional resilience. And the earlier kids can learn, oh, this is a feeling of frustration. I didn't get what I want and I'm frustrated. And knowing that the solution isn't, I'm gonna make you give me the thing I want, <laughs> always, sometimes it is but oftentimes it's not. <laughs> and what really the solution is for them to find a way to cope with the feeling of, I didn't get exactly what I wanted this time and become resilient to that, uh, that feeling so that we can curb what we're worried about our kids turning out to be like really entitled, you know, possibly even kind of spoiled kids who are like complaining about things that really in, in the big picture are, are you know, pretty meaningless right and wanting them to have the resiliency to be like oh i didn't get what i want okay hmm i wonder you know i wonder how i could how i could go forward and maybe either get what i want in a positive way or let it go so so working on emotional resiliency really really important and that's why i'm so glad you're here in the raising our resilience group 
getting these tools from me on the regular. We have regular trainings, right, with the six calm parent tools, you know, several times a year. Also uh, navigating meltdown workshops, things like that, so that you know what to do in the middle of a tantrum or a power struggle or how to even prevent them. So that's, that's one big piece. It's like a pillar of my seven pillars, emotional mastery. Another can be motivation mastery, like being able to kind of um, stay motivated even if you're experiencing a setback or um, which could be, this is boring, which often feels like entitlement or lack of gratitude, right? So somebody's done, I think like worked really hard, made some money, paid for, for this show that you get to go to, they're at the show and they're, and they're like, you know, <laughs> oh, great. Um, and that can also feel like, ingra you know, ungratefulness or, or entitlement. And really what's going on is like, they haven't figured out a hack or a way to stay engaged and to be motivated to, you know, pay attention. And, and we need to help them with that or even help ourselves with that at times, right? <laughs> and so working on motivation tools is also really helpful. Like um, how, how can we turn this into a game? How can we make this more interesting? Is there some other need that I have right now? Like, am I hungry or am I feeling lonely or tired? Is there something we can do to build that in? So that you know the rest, the food, the water, the attention that you need, or the soothing you need before we go to the show, so that when we're at the show, we can have a really good time because we're well resourced. So looking at things like routines as well, um, and then another area that parents often find incredibly helpful to get support with is around setting limits, because when we set limits and make our expectations really clear, and we get our kids buy-in, oftentimes. Like even something like we've been handling here at my own household is when you taste a food and you don't like, like it, your, your, your instinct's gonna be to go blah or ew, right? And we're like, mm, but, <laughs> and actually, and um, that could hurt somebody's feelings, especially a person who prepared the food. So, so we're kind of you know helping to come up with this sort of expectation that if you, if you try a food, you don't like it, you could say, um, I don't like this, no, thank you rather than blah, <laughs> ew. So, or saying the words like, ew, disgusting, right? <laughs> so, so even just like um, setting, up the, setting up the child for success in the moment will then kind of curb that behavior that feels maybe more great, more in, like entitled or ungrateful, ungrateful right? Um, so we've got emotional tools, motivation tools, uh, routines, right? Like, so you can kind of pre prepare and help the kids be more successful and resourced, give them a preview of what's up, what's happening. Um, and then the limits, like making them really clear and getting kids on board with them so that they're easier to reinforce in the moment. And you can even build in things there that will help with, you know, kind of lead the child more towards gratitude. Like, Joy, like hey, tools, as a family, we're, before we open the next present, we're gonna take a moment to appreciate the one we just opened. And that could be just simple, a simple shift, right? Or expectation that could bring the, the child more into the noticing, the savoring, the expressing the good, feeling, feeling the gratitude. Okay, and then another part is like, if we are strife with people not being on the same page in a family, like two co-parents or, you know, two um, caregivers or, you know, a multitude of caregivers and we're not on the same page and coordinated, kids are getting mixed messages and they're going to start acting out because they, they are testing the system. It works here, it doesn't work there. It works here, it doesn't work there. What, what works where? So getting on the same page is another really big piece. And especially how we mitigate things like conflicts. Um, how we solve our, how, how we behave when we don't get what we want, when we're trying to be right, when we're feeling wrong, is so informing to, it's informative to the kids. It actually can teach them even more about resiliency than any of the other ones, right? Um, like I've always, I, a mentor of mine said, you know, you never really, you don't really know somebody until you experience them not getting what they want. Then, you know, you get to learn a lot about a person. And I was like, really? I don't know about that, but literally the next, the next day, <laughs> this experience where somebody threw a fit about not getting something they wanted. And it just was kind of like, oh, okay. I kind of get more of like where, <laughs> what's important to you and what your coping skills are and your emotional maturity. You can learn a ton, right? And so kids are, kids are really needing these skills and they learn from us. So like the way we fight, they usually end up fighting that way. The way we make up is the way that they make up too. Like they learn so much from our example. So when we're looking at all of these aspects, sometimes it just goes beyond like a quick gratitude lesson, right? So what I would want you to do is the thing I want you to do and not do. 
The thing that I want you to not do is should your kids into feeling grateful, okay? And, <laughs> and making it all of their responsibility to experience gratitude. So don't should them, but also don't make it all of their responsibility because what you can do is you can set them up for success with emotional resiliency, motivation tools, you know, great routines and limits, great conflict resolution skills, getting parents on co-parents and caregivers on the same page. Okay. You can totally set up your kids for success when you do that. And, and you help them with the gratitude piece of like noticing, thinking, feeling, and doing my gosh. I mean, what I've seen has been just so heartwarming, right? So like you get clear away all of the obstacles by setting them up for success and then actually getting those concepts in there kids are incredibly generous with their hearts. You've seen it, right? How many of you have seen your child spontaneously just go and wrap their arms around um, a, even an animal, you know, a person, an animal, even an object, right? Like, I, I'd say, I just love this so much. Like they have that purity of heart and that authentic love, right? That's flowing through them. Um, and if we could just clear the clear obstacles and help them learn, you know, and get, get resilient, while helping them connect those dots and notice, think, feel, and then do um, with those feelings, the sky's the limit. And we set them up for so much success in, in life, in the big picture. So thank you for being here and tuning in. Um, I want you to go ahead and write in the comments, notice, think, feel, and do. If you haven't yet, it helps you. I, I'm, I have a master's in education, so I want you to learn. <laughs> it helps you to integrate this information. And if you could, um, if you feel like there are obstacles, like I mentioned, like emotional coping tools, getting on the same page, conflict resolution tools, um, things like that, that you would like to learn more about, what I encourage you to do is to just discover uh, which of those areas, I know Jennifer Cormier and Jordan, Jennifer LH have both done this before already and found this really valuable. Um, head over to this um, parent discovery quiz that I've created based on my research seven pillars that really help kids um, and families to become resilient. When you take the quiz, what it'll do is it'll just help you to get more clarity about which of these pillars you want to focus on. And you might find that it's all of them, which means you should definitely head over to the part where you can apply for a discovery session, a strategy session with me, where we will you know, unearth through your quiz results what you can focus on next. Like Jennifer and I did it, uh, Jennifer C, Jennifer LH, Jennifer LH and I like where we got on this, this call and I remember we got specific things to do right away and you saw a change, right? With your little one, with Vincent. And, and it can be that easy where we just spend 20 to 30 minutes together and then you go do some things and you can shift dynamics. That you can get quick results that way. And then if you're looking at long-term change, I also have ways that you can work with me in more in depth either in, on a private setting or in a group setting or a blend of the two. And so I want you to have a chance to do that. So head over to the quiz. It looks like this. I'll make sure you, so you can see it's friendly. <laughs> and all you'll be doing is just, um, you know, rating yourself as either a beginner or having mastery or something in between for each of these skills. And I kind of um, key, key sort of concepts that you, um, will, will help you build the, the foundation for your family for all the years ahead, okay? And it's based on the set, those seven pillars of raising resilient children. And once you're done at the bottom, you can let me know, um, you know, if you attended this workshop, like what you got out of it, um, how to get the cheat sheet here, if you wanna opt in for, for more tips and things. And then on the next page, there's an opportunity for you to apply for that free strategy session. So we'll get together for 20 minutes if you qualify, and then we'll have a chance to go over your quiz results, get you a few things you can do right away, a little, a little mini action plan, and see if it makes sense for us to explore um, you know, working together, see if it's a good fit with zero obligation. So yeah, if that's interesting to you, head over there. I've got opened up some spots on my calendar this week and next week. Um, other than that, you know, I just want to say, I have been amongst a group of small children. I did this at a, we did this curriculum at a preschool um, here in the Bay Area. And, you know, I'll show you this really cute picture where, um, you know, kids were <laughs> standing around learning about this and um, outside where we had them like tune into the goodness. And they wore these like 
goodness glasses that we made to look all around and try to use all of their senses to see what's good around them. That's in the notice, right? See more good, to, to notice the good, savor the good. Um, and these two little boys just kept looking, looking at the same thing and noticing the same smells. It was just the cutest thing ever. And then they came back and we filled up our gratitude tree full of all the things that they saw in their, in their world that they noticed were good. So if you, if you were finding that your child is not noticing the good on their own, you know, if you, if they're, they're not, they're not even, there's nowhere for you to even start. That's something else you could also do is just go on like a goodness, like a goodness glasses look where you look through these lenses to see the good, um, or just go on a little discovery walk right outside in your yard or on the neighborhood and try to find 10 good things for your 10 good fingers and then come home and like talk about them and draw something about them. And then you can go into the think, feel, and do part of it, okay? All right, you all, lots of love to you. Jennifer H, Jennifer C, so glad you're here. Those of you who watch later, please participate in the comments as well. I would love to hear from you and um, hope you, uh, your, your heart is feeling full of gratitude for the goodness in your life um, and that you're able to share that and kind of spill it over to your children. And um, let me know if you need anything, I'm here for you, okay? And I'll be back next week for an Ask Me Anything. So there'll be a big open Q&A about all the topics that our new members have been raising. Jennifer's giving us high tens, thumbs up and prayer hands. <laughs> Lots of love to you too, Jen. And we'll see you all next time. Bye for now.